Uh, hey YouTube, it's Ryan here. So we're going to be making a complete guide on the first Necromancer at some point, like with everything, everything, everything. But I saw a lot of people were struggling getting their first kills or sort of understanding the base mechanics of the boss. So what I thought I'd do is do a little talk through here. I spent a bunch of time yesterday testing out methods for a full complete YouTube guide. Um, but just from a timing standpoint, I think the guide might take like a week or two. And I know a lot of people want to get these kills now. Uh, so what we did is we did a ton of testing with power gear, with tank gear, with a ton of different rebo bars and a bunch of different kind of activity levels. So like how many inputs needed. We had crazy ones where you don't move at all. You just spam eat food the whole time. Uh, and then we have um, some slightly more active ones as well. Also, I wanted to apologize for my voice. I have been playing and streaming uh, about 18 or 19 hours a day since Necromancy came out. So my apologies for that. Uh, but yeah, the info we have should be pretty good here. Uh, and I feel like very confident about it. So the first setup I'm going to go through here is relatively inactive. So really all you're doing ability wise is you're only manually firing three things. You've got your volley of souls, which is my A key. You've got your finger of death, which is the S key. And then you've got your weapon special attack, which is the D key. And what you'll do is whenever you have three souls, you'll hit volley of souls. You can see them floating around you. And then whenever you have six or 12 necrosis stacks, you're going to use finger of death. And then whenever you can, you're going to use a special attack. And it's just a good way to get some damage. Um, the main damage output of this method actually comes from a combo that's really, really good uh, and really underrated, which is a combo of the Skeleton Warrior, uh, which is first on a Revo Bar, and then the, uh, the Vengeful Ghost. When you command the Ghost, it buffs the damage dealt by everything else by a flat amount of like 600. What that means for the Skeleton that attacks really fast is he starts hitting like a truck. So he can actually do like 250,000 damage per minute by himself. So if you're going to be doing a single target Revo setup, that's going to be sort of the bulk of it. And then what we've got here is we've got Touch of Death, um, and then we've got Soul Sap. So basically the two things that give you currencies that you can then spend on damage. Uh, you don't need the auto attack on the bar, I just had it in this video. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, for Auras, I'm using Aegis and a Hellhound. The Blood Reaver is really expensive, so a lot of people I know, uh, you know, didn't want to be spamming Reaver Skulls, which is totally fair. And then you'll also notice that I'm not using a Zuck Cape. If you have one, Death Skulls should be first on your Reaver Bar. It's extremely strong, but uh, yeah, I didn't want to assume that you've got a Zuck Cape. Gear's pretty cheap. I'm wearing the tier 90 set. You can make it yourself. It doesn't require the harmonic plates. And then I've got a Book of Jazz, uh, the tier 90 main hand and offhand, which obviously you unlock before you unlock Raziel, Salve Amulet, Ring of Death, and that's basically all that you're going to need. So uh, yeah, let's get into the fight here. Uh, before we go in, what I'm doing is I'm summoning all of my, uh, my conjures because they don't cost adrenaline when you're out of combat. So that's kind of a really good thing to do. Uh, now, the place that I'm standing is extremely important. Um, for the first Necromancer, you need to always be between three and six tiles away from him. If you're further out than that, he'll start teleporting around the room and summoning tons of minions, and it will totally mess up the kill. So just remember, you want to stay in that exact, very specific range uh, of, of safety. And if you go outside of that, your kill is going to be a little bit tougher. But I will also show you what to do if you do accidentally end up in the wrong spot. So I'm going to stand where I'm standing here. I'm casting Invoke Death. This is an incantation. If you're wearing power gear, you don't need to cast it because it'll apply automatically. But uh, what it will do is you can apply it to your target and then it'll stay on the target permanently. And then when the target gets below a certain threshold of life points, he gets insta killed. So it's just a nice thing to do before we go in. No, I'm throwing a bomb bomb. Uh, the other thing that I want to note here is I am also not using any prayers or prayer flicking. There's one mechanic where I put prayers on for and that's it. And we're just camping soul split here. So I really, I wanted something to be as low effort and kind of minimal input as humanly possible. If you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm basically just looking at my buff bar. Uh, so I've got my souls floating around my head. Whenever I've got three, I volley. Whenever I've got six necrosis stacks, I finger of death. And then I'm using my special attack as often as I can. And uh, you'll see my skeleton is doing a ton of damage. Like I said, the combo of the ghost and the skeleton is absolutely insane. So that's probably doing more damage than anything else. But the volley of souls, I mean, it hits a 15k. It's all really solid. When the boss summons minions, you have a couple different options. If you've got Death Skulls, just use Death Skulls because it will just kill everything. Um, but Necromancy has an ability called Threads of Fate. I'm hovering over it right now. Um, and Threads of Fate is extremely cool. What it does, it's kind of like Greater Chain. It's a spell or an incantation. You cast it, and then your next two abilities, if they're single target, will AoE. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Threads of Fate, and then I'm going to use Finger of Death. And it's just going to kill the minions instantly. Uh, the minions initially don't hit much, but they hit an absolute ton a little bit later on. So you need to be kind of mindful of them. You don't want to just leave 10 of them on you. If there's one or two, though, you're probably fine. Uh, the other thing I wanted to notice about or, or mention about this tank gear, my base life points is 16,400. 
which is absolutely ridiculous. And because of that, you'll see me get hit like a 4K and think that's a lot of damage. But with this amount of HP, it isn't really. It's a very small percentage of my HP bar. So just a note that you'll see me taking a lot of damage, but compared to the amount of HP I have, it's actually uh, really, really manageable. Um, but yeah, so when the first Necromancer says suffer at my hand, what he's gonna do uh, is I believe that's the prayer. Uh, I, I believe, yeah, whenever you get sparks, he's gonna disable your protect from necromancy prayer if you have it on, which I found annoying. So that's why we're camping soul split. But uh, whenever he says it, he's just gonna hit you like a 3k. It's not a huge deal. He'll cast it, you'll get hit a 3k, and there it is. Um, and yeah, we're just going through. <laughs> As you can see, we're actually kind of melting him. We're almost halfway through the uh, the first half of the boss fight, uh, which is which is really, really solid. With the setup, it's a very low effort. If your Hellhound gets low HP, you can drop a Prism of Restoration, or you can use Hellhound Scrolls. It's whatever you want. Uh, I think the Prism's easier, so I do that. And yeah, as you can see, we're not really putting in a lot of effort here. It's very, very, very low effort, which I think is a really, really good way to go. Um, and yeah, character's doing pretty much all the work at this point. And um, here I got a second set of minions, so I elected to use Blood Siphon. Blood Siphon, it siphons HP from everything around you and then applies it to one target. And you'll see here, it actually did a really good chunk of damage to the first Necromancer, and it healed me a good bit. Um, but alternatively, what you could do is, I've got Threads of Fate up in 15 seconds, and you could just wait for Threads of Fate. And I think that might actually be an even better way to, uh, to deal with the minions, is maybe just eat a small amount of food. Um, so at 1 minute 30, or right around there in the fight, every time, he's going to barge into you and then say, I will reap your soul. This is a stun. You can just wait for the stun to expire and move. It doesn't hit that much, uh, even though it sounds absolutely terrifying. But uh, remember, now you're too close to him for the distance where he's going to start teleporting around. So what you want to do is you want to use freedom and just move back into that same safe range of distance from him. And there you go. When the first Necromancer is under 400,000 life points, he'll say, join us in death and he'll spawn these ghosts. And they're kind of annoying because sometimes he can just back to back them. Um, and they go down a line, they hit you about four or 5,000 damage when they hit you. So you can alternatively tank them, or you can move to avoid them, but there's actually an even better way, and a super, super easy way to avoid the damage on them. So I'm going to show that to you right now. Uh, pardon, the, uh, pardon the gear and the setup. Uh, I've done now 400 Raziel kills. I've done an absolute ton. I've been loving this boss. And uh, yeah, so we figured out an easier way to deal with the join us in death and the, the ghost spawn. So instead of moving sideways and kind of trying to stay within that bubble and not going too far, it can alternatively be even easier to just do this. The ghosts will spawn two tiles behind you, and what you can do to avoid the damage is just step directly where the ghost spawns. See that? And I didn't get hit. It's a typeless 5k hit if you get hit. Um, so that's by far the easiest way to do it. So if you're standing three tiles out, you just go between three and five tiles, and you'll block it perfectly every single time. Here, I'll play it again. Um, so yeah, that would be sort of my... Uh, my, my strong recommendation for the ghost. If you get it back to back, it can be a little tough, but once again, it isn't gonna one-shot you, especially if you're in tank gear with 17,000 life points. So if it does hit you, uh, you're gonna end up being completely fine. You can just eat if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, that's the join us in death attack. And we'll go back to uh, the VOD we were looking at before. So this special attack uh, is really easy to tell because he's a necromancer like you are. So when you have max souls, you want to use Volley of Souls, and the first Necromancer does the exact same thing. Uh, the souls get generated by the obelisks to the right and the left. It's not worth taking the time to kill them, just because the attack doesn't hit that much. But whenever you see the first Necromancer, get up to five souls. And also, if you have game sounds on, that's really helpful too, because he's voice acted. And whenever he says this is true power, he is going to do a Volley of Souls on you. He's going to launch five souls, and each one's going to hit about 1,000, 1,500 damage. So what you want to do for this is you can pray deflect necromancy and use devotion or you can just pray deflect necromancy. This is the only time I put on the prayer. And you'll see right there I'm being hit 700 damage per. So that's like the one time that you actually want your overhead prayers and other than that you can just continue to chill. Oh yeah, as you can see like we're not really doing a whole lot. We're just dealing with the mechanics or moving around when needed, but you could face tank all of them. I haven't used any food up to this point. So if you really wanted to, you wouldn't have to, but I think generally speaking, it's good to do the mechanics. They're kind of fun as well. And as you can see, my Revo Bar has just spawned up another Vengeful Ghost. The Ghost is one of the things that's healing me there as well. He heals you for a percentage of all of his attacks, so it's really, really good in a Revo Bar. 
Um, the other thing you can do for these ghosts is you can also use dive if you want to, to just get out of range like I did there. Doesn't matter. 20 ways to deal with this mechanic. It is not so bad. Um, and this is true power once again, so he's going to launch a volley of souls. I just pray deflect necromancy. And that's it. We're now in the final phase of the boss. So this final phase has been really, really, really tough um, for a lot of people. This is the hard part. Uh, because basically what's going to happen is you have to move pretty close into the first necromancer to be able to damage him but he's also going to be dropping soul bombs on your location pretty constantly and they do a ton of damage like if you stand stationarily you take a lot of damage actually i can show you that in a second here because when you're on you know an end game main account that's doing speed kills you actually do elect to tank it but you only elect to tank it because you're going to kill the boss in two seconds <laughs> we'll get a nice little look of, of sort of how much damage it takes so what i would do on my main account now like when i'm when i'm doing fast kills in, in top tier gear is i surge in immediately so I'm in melee distance and then i instantly use reflect and then once i'm in reflect i'm just dumping all the damage i have on him so that i can just kill him instantly so that i don't have to worry about the damage but as you can see i'm being hit really really hard so that is not a very good, like, teachable way to <laughs> avoid the special. I'm not going to be like, just kill the boss way faster so that it doesn't hit you. So what I would advise um, for this, the easiest way is eat a little bit of food. Keep your soul split on. You don't want to pray necromancy because he's going to clear your, uh, your prayer all the time. And then just run in a line back and forth. And you'll end up dodging about half of the attacks. Um, I've looked at different pathing. You can go in like a diamond shape. It doesn't seem like there's a perfect way to dodge all of the specs. And then for this last bit, this is the one part where you're going to want to do a little bit of manual combat. It doesn't really matter what buttons you're hitting in terms of your basics. Just press them in, in any order or configuration you'd like. But then it's the same as before. When you've got the currencies, so I've got six necrosis stacks, you want to spend them. So you're going to see me using Finger of Death right there because I've got my six stacks and it's going to hit a 10k. So all you do here is, yeah, just run back and forth on the line. Keep eating. Remember that you have a stupid amount of life points. You can also VitPod if you want to get a capped out 32,000 life points and uh, yeah, run back and forth in a line. And then as soon as the first Necromancer gets below 30,000 life points, uh, he's going to die and you will have your successful kill. Uh, the kill times of this method were about three minutes. Um, some of the kills were faster. I don't think any of them were really slower. I think this is probably the slowest one. Um, but yeah, that's sort of my, my low effort method to not use a lot of food, not use a lot of supplies, not have a Zuck Gape and camp or kill effectively the first necromancer uh but now what if you have power gear because obviously tank gear and a ton of life points you know makes your life a little bit easier so let's show you guys a power gear method too uh i actually would probably recommend the power gear unless you're going for your first first kill if you have it this is me wearing the tier 70 power gear so i do not have the most defense bonus and it's effectively the exact same strategy, but you are going to notice I'm taking a little more damage. I don't have that dodge chance, um, but I'm also dealing a little more damage. So the end kill time was about 30 seconds faster, but the technique didn't change at all. I didn't find I had to change the bar or anything like that. I just found um, the damage was a little bit nicer and the phasing was a little bit nicer too, because the longer you're in the fight, the more mechanics you have to deal with. And sometimes what that means is power gear can actually result in you taking less damage than tank gear because you're killing the boss faster. Um, but yeah, we can fast forward here because I didn't actually change anything in the boss fight here. It's exactly the same as before. 130, we get the I shall reap your soul. We're just dealing with the mechanics the exact same way as before. And then I wanted to show you guys the last phase because the last phase is, you know, that's the real phase. Uh, another nice tip too is if you have the undead slayer ability, I wasn't using it in this video because I don't know if you have it or you don't. But if you have it, it's really, really good to activate. It's extremely strong. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use my Adrenaline Potion as well. And as you can see, these hits are now taking a bigger chunk out of my life points. Uh, it's definitely more noticeable and more meaningful. But once again, if you're able to spam eat food and you've got food keybinds, uh, I think the power gear is totally reasonable, even at tier 70 for effective killing of the boss. And you'll notice, I mean, the, the last phase is definitely noticeably faster than in the tank gear. But yeah, pick whatever option you want. Uh, both are really good. And this is what I would say is the best kind of low effort way to kill the first necromancer now we also did some testing where we threw defensive abilities on a bar and we just tanked all of the hits on the last phase and i wanted to show it because it is possible but i would strongly not advise it i think the first necromancer the whole idea is you learn some stuff about your necromancy abilities you gain some understanding and then you use those abilities properly in order to take out the boss uh, i did want to mention if you want to go through 300k of bruise every single kill this does technically work 
but uh, I found it to be a lot more annoying and actually a lot more inputs than just running around back and forth and manually firing a couple things. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I'm just taking a ton of damage, eating a ton of food, and then I was using debilitate and reflect when I needed them. And this was another way to technically get a kill if you're stuck. Uh, but yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. And there's going to be a whole lot more necromancy content coming very soon. With that said, uh, feel free to leave a like, subscribe. And if you want to see something from me with regard to necromancy, just let me know. Leave it in a comment and I will probably make it. Okay, that was really good.